We're talking Deontay Johnson and tight end advanced stats on Rotoviz Radio. What's up, Rotoviz? Hey, what's up, Rotoviz listeners? This is Curtis Patrick. I'm here with Dave Caveman. We are two of the owners here at Rotoviz, and you're listening to the Rotoviz Fantasy Football Show. Uh, this is our second show of the week, and as is our tradition, we're going to be cutting up some advanced stats on uh, some notable players. Dave doing the deep homework and trying to help us spot a breakout before it happens, or just explain. Um, what's actually going on with with a player from a fantasy perspective um, by showing us some of the the stats, uh, performance stats uh, that are occurring on the field. Um, you know, Dave, I did want to start this episode just by saying, I think it's going to be pretty great. I actually grabbed one of my favorite bourbons from the shelf. I, I'm in full bourbon season now. Um, the, the air has changed here in Ohio. I think it was 20 degrees when I woke up this morning. And I grabbed, this was a limited edition, man, Knob Creek 12 year. They've only put it out one time. The story behind it is they had a batch that wasn't all the way ready at their standard eight to nine year pull. And so they they let it age a little bit more, but it ended up sweeter than what they normally put out. And this is just like, I wish you were sitting right next to me, man. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, and that we and that we could we could share a pour of this together. But yep. anyway, I'm going to be sipping on that while you uh, dig in to Deontay Johnson here for us. Yeah, so we talked about Deontay Johnson on the episode that aired yesterday. It had me kind of thinking, we know that this guy has been just racking up the expected points. He is now the number one player in expected points. I don't remember if heading into the week he was the number one at the wide receiver position, but I wanted to just see some of the things that have driven his overall performance in being a very useful fantasy wide receiver this year. So I went into the advanced stats explorer, filtered out wide receivers that had less than 50 targets and took a look at some of Johnson's numbers. So he's running 34.8 routes per game, which ranks fifth among wide receivers. He's second in targets per game at 11.2, which is a ton of targets. And he's also uh, second in routes per target at 3.1, meaning that he's seeing a target roughly every 3.1 routes, which is really impressive. Now, one thing that people knocked Johnson a lot for last year was the drops. He actually, this year, has one of the best rates in the league in terms of drops per catchable passes. His percentage, just at 2%, uh, he really has swung things around there. We're seeing you know, that regression in the correct direction for him. Um, he's eight in yards per route, ninth in air yards per game, which I think that's a number might surprise some people. Um, he's 14th uh, with 5.6 yards after the catch. So we're seeing a lot of work for this guy. We're seeing him get a lot of air yards. We're seeing him perform after the catch. And some of that is coming because he actually ranks sixth among wide receivers in evasion percentage. And he's also notably sixth in missed tackle percentage. So you think about the fact that this guy's getting the highest quality workload in terms of expected points and he's making things happen with the ball. Hard not to be excited about him. He's also uh, the second in wide receivers in terms of team target percentage with 31%. So it was only a matter of time before Deontay Johnson became the uh, player that we highlight with the player of the week award uh, because that, that, volume is just absurd and then he's also doing some nice things with the ball in his hands yeah i love that we're diving a little bit deeper uh on on dj here you know this is just his third season in the league um and we talked at the end of the show yesterday a little bit about you know the offseason changing of the guard that's going to happen with a lot of you know the elite wide receivers from a redraft perspective um and dynasty perspective and, and deontay johnson has to really be entering that picture um, based off of, of what we've seen. I mean, you know, he he averaged 10 PPR his first season in the league as a complementary weapon in 2019 and then exploded in 2020. But in 2021, he really has taken it to the next level. Um, he actually already has more yak uh, this season, Dave, 
um, just through 11 games played than he had in either of his first two seasons in the league. He's he's a full yard, uh, actually 1.2 yards ahead per reception in Yak uh, versus his pace last year. Um, you know, which which is pretty huge when you're getting the number of receptions that that he is is mounting. I mean, he's got an extra what he's probably going to have an extra 100 150 yards just um with what he's doing with the ball in his hands um versus where he was last year and he's been a very stable player other than this um across all three seasons. I'm I'm um kind of digging a little deeper in the NFL stat explorer in our career detail tab. It's not one that is frequented. I think everyone loves the fantasy stats tab and the matchup analysis tab, but we have game logs and career detail. And on the career detail tab, one thing I love is it just lays out the progression of the career, um, just kind of in spreadsheet form, except, you know, Dave beautified it a little bit. And you can see that PPR per opportunity has been at 1.5 or greater in all three seasons. Um, So, you know, he's really turned in the same type of, um, fantasy production per attempt, even with more uh, opportunity in each of the three seasons in succession. So he kind of just has continued to be what he was when he came into the league. He just keeps earning more and more opportunity. The exciting thing with Deontay Johnson, I think, is you know you you noted that he's number one in expected points per game, but would it shock you to learn that he's two hundred and thirty seventh in fantasy points over expectation <laughs> among wide receivers? He's two hundred twenty. He's wide receiver two twenty eight in FPOE per game, so he's got the most valuable role of any wide receiver in the NFL based off of his opportunity. But because of the catch rate, um, and then also um, where he's getting the targets on the field and the conversion into touchdowns, there's still a lot of upside here. Believe it or not, um, for a player, you know, pacing, you know, for almost twenty points per game at this point, and we talked about that we hadn't really seen the boom weeks from him in yesterday's episode. And and I think that he is a player that's on the verge of showing us that. If it doesn't happen this year, it's going to happen next year. We're going to see some of those Tyler Lockett, Tyreek Hill, 40-plus point games. It's just going to happen for a player that's getting this much opportunity, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm excited that we talked about him, decided to highlight him here, because I think that is one of those key points. We know it's always about finding those guys that are going to pop at the right time for you, especially when you're investing in them in redraft. So obviously there'll be more discussion about what that Steelers offense might look like, but as things sit right now, I think Deontay Johnson is a player that I want to have on a pretty high number of my teams, uh, you know, like in best ball or something where I'm managing a portfolio. Well, let's, that's enough about Deontay Johnson. Um, I was pumped that we got to highlight George Kittle yesterday um, and talk a little bit of tight end. And I think you're going to dig more into that position, which is great because it's just been an absolute disaster beyond the elite guys. So what do you have for us on tight ends, Dave? All right. Yeah, we have not talked that much about tight ends. Uh, so I didn't want to focus on one specific player here. Instead, I just kind of pulled some of the leaderboards just want to lay out a couple of things so people get an understanding of the players with the most volume and then some of these guys that have done the most when they've actually had the ball. So in terms of routes per game, shouldn't surprise anybody that Travis Kelsey leads the way with 34.3, followed by Darren Waller, 32.4, Mark Andrews, Mike Gesicki, Kyle Pitts still comes in at uh, fifth. Right. Despite some of the the concerns we've had, it still is one of those things that's encouraging is that he's been heavily involved behind him. You have Hawkinson, Dalton Schultz, Tyler Higby, Dawson Knox at 27. Uh, in terms of actual targets per game, no surprise. You have Kelsey Waller, Andrews leading the way, followed by Hawkinson, Kronk, Gesicki, again, Kyle Pitts, then George Kittle. So you know, not not too exciting stuff there. Um, if we look, though, at um, players that are seeing um, or doing a good job, Curtis, at actually converting passes thrown their way into receptions, Noah Fant leading the charge there behind him, Gerald Everett, Tyler Higby, TJ Hawkinson, Tyler Conklin, Hunter Henry, Dan Arnold. What this list tells me to some extent is that there's a certain level of volume that a player gets to where they're not going to be able to convert all of their 
receptions. So I, I don't think that there's too much to to glean there. But one thing that is interesting is when we sort things a little bit differently and we look at players that have had trouble this year with drops, uh, Jonu Smith is towards the top of that list. I think it's been a pretty disappointing year for Smith compared to what people thought he might be able to do uh, with New England. Um, so perhaps, you know, maybe next year that regresses a little bit team can get him a little bit more involved. Uh, but, but let's look at something a little more interesting here. And, and one of the things I wanted to highlight was the difference between some of these top level tight ends and the guys behind them. And at this point, Curtis, I think that Mark Andrews is playing like one of those top level tight ends. The guy is seeing 84 air yards per game. That's tied with Darren Waller for first, but behind them, you have Kyle Pitts at 75, then Travis Kelsey at 69, followed by Rob Gronkowski at 65. So it's interesting to see him in there. Uh, If we look in terms though, of actual air yards conversion, My boy Dawson Knox at 75 coming in only behind CJ Uzoma. Uh, And then Knox also, if you look at routes per touchdown, uh, is the second most efficient tight end behind Gronkowski. You actually have Pat Fryermuth at third. And the other thing that's pretty interesting to see here is in terms of evasion percentage, you have Kittle and Kelsey leading the way. Shouldn't it come as a surprise? But you also have Uzoma popping pretty high in this leaderboard as well. Dawson Knox, top 10. And then finally, one of the other things that I think is pretty interesting um, because it shows how a player is being used in the context of their offense. First down percentage, Dallas Goddard leads the way, followed by Dawson Knox. Then you have George Kittle, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey working in their way towards the top of that leaderboard. Uh, Now, Knox was a player that I had talked about over the summer, so I have had a reason to be interested in him. Um, But it is cool when you start seeing him pop in some of these lists. And I think that like, even this year down the stretch, um, you and I had talked a little bit about this, that there might be players that had more name recognition going into the season that at this point, Knox should probably be playing over maybe even guys like Fryermuth. So I knew I just threw a ton your way. There wasn't any real roadmap or logic to something really like important to focus on there. <laughs> but I think it gives yeah. us, you know, an, an interesting yeah. uh, view of the Titan landscape. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Start hiring right now with $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Offer valid through March 31st. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy. And Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Well, admittedly, uh, as you the first couple times you mentioned Kyle Pitts, um, my brain did a weird thing. Where have you ever seen Between Two Ferns? Yes, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so but for the for the listeners, Between Two Ferns is um, kind of a a a mockumentary style interview short video series where Zach Galifianakis uh, interviews famous people and just is just off a little bit in his presentation and even how he addresses them. Um, and he acts like it's kind of a chore to be interviewing him. It's, it's really great. You should definitely uh, look it up if you've never seen it before. But he he interviews Brad Pitt and he introduces him as Bradley Pitt. <laughs> and, it just, <laughs> and it just gets me. And you said Kyle Pitts, and I don't know why. I think it's just the state of delirium that I'm in. Yep. Um, 
uh, of sleep deprivation. And that's all I could think about for like 30 seconds. Um, so I think as you were highlighting, uh, Kelsey and Waller and, uh, running down that initial list, that was where I was focusing. Um, but then as, as you really got into this, you know, I think there, there are some, um, some definite takeaways and, you know, dating back to the summer, when we talked about Dawson Knox, you definitely were on him. Um, you fought for our Rotovis team, um, to draft him in our mini, uh, FFPC collabs. Yep. Um, you forced me to look at him. Uh, more seriously to the point where I then called him the most likely Robert Tunyon candidate uh, for the season. And it's really interesting because he, he is having the Bob Tunyon season. You know, it, it's, it's eerily similar, man. He's leading all tight ends and touchdowns. Um, and it's the, it's the function of being tied to um, a quarterback uh, who throws for a lot of touchdowns, but not being the primary target. You can't cover all these guys and, and look out for the mobile aspect when you get down, you know, close to the end zone on some of these teams. And for all the same reasons that Tunyon hit with Rodgers, you know, we're seeing Knox being able to capitalize as well. You know, both of these guys under 13% team target percentage um, outside the top 12 in air yards per target and uh, just doing it mostly with touchdowns. And so I love that you highlighted him here. And I was definitely shocked to see that Dawson Knox is tight end five in PPR per game. Um, in our episode prep. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Like I knew he was having a decent season, but you know, he's got six tight end one weeks. Um, he's got six tight end one weeks out of uh, nine games played. Yep. Uh, you're not, you're not going to, and, and he's been in the top 24 and eight out of those nine weeks. His only snoozer was uh, his only snoozer appearance was in week 10 against the jets. So, you know, he really hasn't killed you except one time. So Knox, somebody that is going to, you know, I think we're going to have to look at as a serious candidate, especially if, you know, the bills were to move on from Manny Sanders and or Cole Beasley um, next season, could Knox become like the clear number three target in the offense? You know, he'd have some real upside as a, a tight end um, moving forward for, for 2022. But the question I wanted to ask you, Dave, yep. is with him being with his be, him being more touchdown dependent like this, I mean, how do you view him versus some of the other players that are in the same category, but, um, you know, maybe have more name recognition or like they just feel more comfortable to slot in your starting lineup? I know we're really deep into the season and tight end five should matter. Um, but like, let's say versus like a Noah Fant um, or, or you know, mentioned Gerald Everett. He popped in a couple of these uh, metrics. Like, do you feel comfortable starting Knox over a player who is the clear number three? target getter on his team at this point, just because we've seen the sample size or, you know, how specifically in that matchup. Cause I have, I think that in four different leagues this week. <laughs> um, so I'm really personally interested in, in your take here. So wait, so that, that's versus Knox, Knox versus uh, who is it versus Noah fan. Oh, Noah fan. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do feel confident and comfortable in playing Knox and the tight end position is inherently one that is tied to touchdowns. Um, touchdowns are such a difference maker for the position outside of the guys like Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller who are really functioning like the top target in their offense. Obviously, you could throw George Kittle into there. We're seeing Mark Andrews step into that role. But outside of them, even like you know, like a guy like Noah Fant or or like Mike Kosicki, anybody on that level, largely they're opportunity for edging out a guy like Dawson Knox, who has been finishing in the tight end one range on a weekly basis, how they do it. You almost, um, you know, like on a given week when you're comparing these guys just need to get the touchdown. So a lot of it to me for that tight end really comes back to just, are they going to play in the offense? that's going to put them in that position to get those touchdowns. Like you said, Josh Allen quarterback that throws a lot of touchdowns bills have struggled at points this year compared to what we might've expected. But still, I think, overall one of the stronger teams in the league so yeah i would absolutely feel confident about starting him where the conversation might change a little bit is mm -hmm. do i feel as confident that he remains a top six tight end as we step into next year off of touchdown volume now that's an entirely different story week to week it doesn't concern me as much as things do season to season where it's hard to say that a player can make their living off of touchdowns for an entire season in relation to being slated in the top six, if that makes sense. 
Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing, it's the same uh, effect we've seen with, with Tanyan, but even, even higher profile, uh, higher profile players like Hunter Henry um, that have been super touchdown dependent in the past, you know, it's it just, it is difficult. So you like to see the target volume. Um, you know, you prefer a Waller or an Andrews or Kelsey, but there's only so many of them. So yep. um, yeah, I appreciate you highlighting uh, the tight end position in this way and helping us to paint a clearer picture um, definitely some dynasty stash names in here, you know, seeing, uh, uh, Uzoma and Tyler Conklin and even, even, even somebody like Durham Smythe, uh, or Smith. I don't know. I, I've never actually looked at the phonetic, uh, the phonetics I've heard it uh, said on his last ways. name there. Yeah. That's cause nobody else has yeah, either. Exactly. He's not notable enough of a player. <laughs> um, but, 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 you know, if, if Gesicki would, you know, move on, you know, these are the types of moves that you make in a deeper dynasty league or like that, the last round type picks in uh best ball in the deeper best ball formats that can really pay off. Um, so, you know, this is like, I know sometimes people's eyes gloss over, you start talking deep tight end and well, nobody, but the elites matter. Well, they don't matter except that they, they do. Um, you you want to have a nice collection and a nice stable to choose from because it is so difficult. Um, and when you're making a, a decision between an upside guy like Dawson Knox versus, you know, just, a, a totally fungible wide receiver or, or running back, you know, when you're drafting your squad, you know, maybe taking that high upside backup tight end instead of foregoing the backup um, is the smarter play, especially in a lineup setting league. So um, yeah, that that's all I've really, Oh, the only other thing I, I wanted to say there is it's been really cool to see uh, Rob Gronkowski just doing it again. He's missed so many games this year, but when he's been out there, he's been truly elite again. Yeah. Um, that's a, like that's a tr- great point. Truly elite. Yep, that's one of the and, things that really uh, does stand got, out. Yeah, if you've got Gronk, you've got to, I mean, he's averaging 6.9 targets per game. Um he's exactly where he wants to be. <laughs> and you know, you've you've got a he's auto start. If, if there's any debate, I mean, basically Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews I think are the only clear starts over Gronk if for some reason you can't start two and you own Gronk on your squad. I mean, I'm that confident in him, you know, the rest of season. Yeah, for sure. It's been amazing to see him get back on the field and start doing things like he was doing much earlier in his career, making probably another deep playoff run with Mm. Brady. Anyway, though, Curtis, uh, what do you think? Will we be back on Friday? 100% man. Uh, We are we are into the fantasy playoffs and a lot of the big format tournaments. And in even some leagues that didn't adjust for the 17 game season this year, I've seen a lot of those leagues starting their playoffs this year or uh, this week uh, for this season. So we will talk, start, sit, Uh, you know how to drop us online. It'll be in the liner after we stop talking here. And uh, we can also cut up any, you know, dynasty roster evaluations or just general questions about player takes. Anything you want to send in, we will try to get to. Thank you for listening to the RotoViz Fantasy Football Show. Send us questions at rvffshow at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at DaveCabinFF and at CPatrickNFL. Leave us a voicemail at 978 615 9214 and make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. 